Assalamu alaikum uh, viewers, welcome to another edition of the Pete Talk Show. This is the weekly show that is brought to discuss on issues surrounding peace, the importance of peace and negative consequence of violence. And today is also another historic day in the life of the Peace Talk Show. Today is specifically dedicated to the youths and I have vibrant youths who are ready to come and discuss on a very crucial topic. So in the meantime today, the bazaar is high and therefore the guests will introduce themselves and also I will tell you more about these people. And also their contributions will tell you more about these guests. So in the meantime, stay tuned and keep on watching. I'm coming for you along by the beef and not only this talk so we are local local caracachan coming to the network junk and the B new funding kill and not ninja mini along the funding care for myself in Bala meeting mini be a bank call and yata samba can can they get so be more funding killers are young and don't funding kill so let me know for all and do for now be catch up in Kelly young over the new moon funding cage you might let in your bank open young so as a continent can you be and the local local as in GB honorable you start introducing yourself what do I speak? Do I start with the, I start with the English version or the Wolof version? Anyway, assalamu alaikum bokkai. Mangle na new ye nyep kena kusin neka citrum at santom. Dile nuwah ne ayin daun nyofi daje tay. Watan banyuara watan efi watan bam solola. Dakte li jemal riumi kanam li yobun daun nyisi kanam aglinga hamna ni tay moy ini jama se biriumi. Lulu raglan ini waktan ini kon ham nasi kerana tu dia dengan duga si biru waktan bi. Thank you very much, honourable. What who are you? I think I've already said that. Well, I am honourable Omar Sisela Tuda, man mana ke deputy bu nyamina is si National Assembly bi, walau si negi deputy. Thank you very much for getting me on board, honourable. And madam, you may introduce yourself. Um, thank you very much, Justice. I'm honored to be here once again to talk about youth, youths and peace. Um, I am Degen Juk, the Deputy Speaker of the National Youth Parliament. I'm honored to be here. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Degen. And sir, you can introduce yourself. Uh, greetings to everyone and greetings to my co-panelists and the host. I am Alpha MK Lo. It's a pleasure to be here as a youth and to talk about youth-related issues, most particularly um, peace. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, dear viewers. Uh, these are my great panelists. And badi ngono nilong multi bino rina kacha sotla and kacha mbimi sotla biwolo nintiko. What are the contribution of youths towards building national peace and security? Funding kill kamun katakul like walo muno funding kill katakuti puru katangko ning sabado south. Thank you, Bangkok Kang. So be the whole discourse la and honorables. Our topic is contribution of youths to the maintenance of national peace and security. That is our topic of discussion today, and all our discussions will actually be surrounded on this particular area. And actually, I will start with you. You can express your impression on the topic and also the importance of the show. Yes. Well, once again, I am delightful to um, form part of this panel. Um, but um, if I will be granted leave, I will appreciate if I can just speak in the wall of Vason so that um, this information that I know is going down, down to my people. And most of them, we understand that they cannot speak the English language. And these are the victims. These are the people affected. These are the people who will be involved in certain things uh, at the end of the day. So it is important, whatever information that we are relating to them, we speak the language that they can understand better so that they can benefit and realize the impact of this discussion. Mbokai waktu anda dapat am salon dah tetapi lini waktu anda ragu mahu ikom walu kom jaman nak lawa amin seluruh peace and security. Kon dengan agis itu lalu ndau ni tetapi dapat am salon justice. Lepas lini ham dengan ini tetapi mungkin harus beri umi. Ndau ni dengan iklim ni nyom mom dekat bian. Ndau ni dengan iklim ni nyom opa dua lesi dekat bian. Ndau ni dengan iklim dia form a greater percentage of the population. Lini mungkin harus beri umi. Why dapat am salon tetapi nyom ndau ni nous savons ce qui nous est dans notre vie, ce qui nous est dans notre vie, ce qui nous est dans notre vie. Ce qui nous est dans notre vie, c'est ce que les jeunes nous voyons. Les jeunes ont des jeunes, les jeunes ont des jeunes. Donc, si vous voyez que les jeunes ne sont pas les jeunes, ils ont des jeunes qui ont des jeunes. Ils ont des jeunes qui ont des jeunes. Ils ont des jeunes qui ont des jeunes qui ont des jeunes. Je vais vous donner un exemple. Merci, Honorable. Nous allons venir à ça. Nous allons venir à ça. 
and that always can always speak their eloquent. And thank you very much. And that is the beauty of the Peace Talk Show. Ah, uh, kacha mang tarake kang kankilento. Lafta mina wala ng gambian wala yung faham ba niyo fakang. And yung kacha ang kami kaya wala yung duko mo yung kalamutaro kaya kairo wala na fala ani fitno la uh, masibo. So ah, uh, kung wala kang ni natin ng lafta ko wala you speak it. Any language you want to speak, you speak it. That is the beauty of this. Our ultimate objective is to sensitize the masses so that they can refrain from violence and they can know the beauty of peace. So thank you very much, Honorable. And today, I am sure that my panelists, most of them are, you know, Wolof speakers. So I will be, you know, taking the Bandinka version because my Wolof is not very good. And Honorable, you can actually give your impression on the topic. Um, thank you very much, Justice. I think it's a very important topic and uh, it is something that we, we should continue talking about, having the discussions, having the conversations. Because if we talk about youth and peace, the opposite is youth, youth and violence. And it is so significant that the World Health Organization declared it as a public health issue. Because, uh, because it's aftermath, what happened when youth, youth and violence come into play. So I think it is a very important topic because, you know, it's important to our peaceful coexistence, but it is also important to other facets of society, such as development, such as health and other things. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable and Sir. You can also introduce yourself and give your impression on the topic. Rather, you give your impression on the topic yeah. because you have Thank introduced. you. Thank you, Justice. I think um, the previous speakers have already given the appreciation of the topic, and I will just write on the, the, the protocols and the statements they've given to also register my sincere appreciation of the topic. It's a very timely one and a very, very essential one. For that matter, uh, we are talking about two key issues here. Mm -hmm the youth being part of the topic, but also peace being part of the topic. Mm -hmm. And you will understand that there cannot be any development without um, properly and maximally utilizing the youth, which is one of the key natural resources that this country is blessed with. But also there cannot be any meaningful national sustainable development without peace. So obviously the topic is a key and a very, very essential one. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mbelenga um, moyo nyama andum bi kubinga fale nyama funding kile bijang puruka kuol kachami alonga um funding kile kuol. So uh, today looking at the issue to start with honourable, honourable you actually are a youth and I want you to tell the society who are the youths. Jerry Jeff, lolo amnoslo trop. Shunywa kwenye ndau shubi rio fanga ndau mone kadole rio. Shunywa kwenye ndau shubi rio mone kadole rio. Shunywa kwenye ndau shubi rio kumnyo mone k. Nit yung a hamne elek nyom nyom wara jel responsibility pur dohar reu momu nono. So nyun dau ni kon sufe ke hamne lulu nyun nyom wara neka maki elek nyun nyom neka dole reu mi wala nyun nyom neka ala reu mi kon dafai am solo lep linga hamne nyun koi defsi bi reu mi mu anda linga hamne dafa anda yar ak tegin si lep linga hamne nyun koi dohar. Nit ki aslo muntu neka di ligai aslo muntu neka di defsi bi reu mi fi. Kom dau ngata ham ngane nyun dau ni. Tay nyonyo dole rio mi kwanda yam solo lepeli nga hamne ni yangu idef ngo jara de kusiyon aktegin sufike lulu nyonyo idef as youth it will be helpful kon waenda ngai gisne tay chisa society bi nekas Gambia lepeli nga hamne tay heo no fisi bi Gambia dani wahne ndau nila problem so ame ndau nila gear so ame ndau nila sate so ame ndau nila any kind of discriminatory or any kind of crime that is happening in this country, they are not down yet. So, man, lead of me meet as a young somebody because the more government money you change the narrative, not only you change the narrative, but you definitely book on a thing. I am not only you change the narrative. Why? I don't care more about change narrative. The mindset. Wan nyo ham educate niti sensitize len. Wah le linga ham ne mo ne kata Hawaii and Dawson be real. Why don't they? Is what look politic? They see misal. Dah ngaji sana politician head of political parties. Dah faham am solo. Nyingga ham ni nyingga nato pun tahu union si opa. Political party boleh muntuk dem tay. Nyingga ham ni nyola negeri support. Nyingga ham ni nyola negeri sanil karna. Nyingga ham ni nyola negeri dosen misoni. Dah ngaji sana tahu union opa si political parties yo ini lor. So political parties lalu le negeri dia purgis ni. Now you come events like this, well, any political activity is going on, gives them them down. You take them to tanker, you want to take them to tanker, well, a dog name, you want a dog, well, a deaf name, you want a deaf. This is a problem. I'm going to be real. For now, Liam, we're going to have them. They heads of department or political parties, 
ak institution bo muntu nek wala bankhas bo muntu nek nga nek di def lo pour gis ne ndaw ñu ñew ta xamne lan mo nek sen wala ci bir rew mi lan len wara doxal ci bir rew mi fa len wara tek sen tanga ak ci programmes ame wala political activities mu am ndaw ñi ana lan len wara muna def problème bu muntu yow ci bir rew mi fi sudul ci time politique dañu wax ne ndaw ñi la li nga xamne ni tay wax nen ko ci bir politique problème dina fa dañu wax ne ndaw ñi la political parties head of political parties li nga xamne ni tay xewna amlo ho ndaw ñi ngay gis ñi xex lolu pour lan yow thank you very much uh, honorable i am very glad that you know you are going to that extent you know and discussing on some of the instrumental issues that the youths are doing and to be frank enough you are right uh, youths as the saying goes are the backbone of the nation funding kel le ko banko samba banko banku ya moy ka ta da nyaato funding kel le mie funding kel bon deje wo banko ti da nyaato ya honorable uh, honorable degen you can also tell us actually who are the youths actually and what are some of the things that induce youths to violence um thank you very much justice um when we talk about youths we are talking about the working force of our nation when we talk about youths we are talking about the present and the future of our nation and uh there are many factors that induce young people to violence and uh apart from the the apart from the basic ones that that you know the, the way they are they are upbringing the society in which the kind of society in which they live we talk about inaccessibility and a lack of participation when young people don't have access to certain things such as basic needs uh, such as employment such as you know water food salt and all that these are things because at some point it becomes frustrating and uh, they think the only way to solve this is violence most of the time that is what brings you know violence into the minds of young people and they use violence to solve these things the other thing is lack of participation when we feel we are not involved in the things we should be involved or even the things we should be leading in this breaks our heart and most of the time we think violence is the only way for for let everybody know our presence is important these are all things that leads to public disobedience and you know young people resort to violence to solve issues that's why it is important to talk about this most as, as, as specifically like honorable said because we are in an election year when young people participate have access to you know resources and get into politics when they participate in all levels of the political processes we can we can ensure ourselves of a peaceful election year because young people will not be left out and uh, they will have the opportunity to solve issues in the in the ways in which it uh, you know these things are provided for them rather than resorting to violence you know so in thank, thank, thank you very much honorable i'm sorry for cutting you sir you know uh, the beauty of this show is that i have eloquent people and who actually can speak very well so as a result when one of them is giving the mic you know i have to seize the mic from them or else they can speak for over three hours or so and then I will just to add on what you said, uh, I was going through some um, documents and articles in Assam, and I found this very interesting from a Dutch, you know, a Denmark, you know, uh, foreign ministry, their research and publication. They said like partnering with partnering with and investing in young people to prevent violence, to promote their inclusion and translate the democratic dividends into a peace dividend you understand so when you look at it you know when we invest and partner with youths mm -hmm. there is no way that we are going to call for violence. there is no way that we even have violence in our society mm -hmm. so as a result you know uh, i will go straight to uh, mr lo mr lo something very uh, contentious is actually disturbing our society and these days we have a lot of burglaries rapes and murders you understand and most of the time the young people are the ones you know accused most of the time young people are the ones awake most of the time young people are the ones who are the victims what do you think are the cause of this? Thank you, Justice, once again for that brilliant question. But just to add on to a point you raised before I actually answer this particular question, the issue of investing in the young people mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, violence is really avoided. Mm -hmm. Because um, it is better not to lose peace than to resort into um, addressing violence. Mm -hmm. You will understand that from research, um, annually 14.8 trillion um, uh, dollars is spent on containing uh, yeah. uh, violence across the globe. Mm -hmm. So if a greater chunk of this amount of money was spent on investing in youth mm -hmm. in terms of giving them the right education, mm -hmm. giving them the job they need, giving mm -hmm. them the survival they deserve, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I want to believe 
such violence would have been attained. So it, it, bet, it is better to be proactive than to be, to be reactive to, to, to violence. Um, coming to your question, the causes of violence or the reason behind the uprise or the shock of violence in the Gambia is, is complex and multifaceted. Uh, complex in the sense that there are a lot of factors that can be put in place that I don't think this so alone can help us exhaust all of them. But just to look at a few of them, I'll start by saying the reason there is a, a short in violence, not only in the Gambia, but, uh, but let me just focus on the Gambia for, mm -hmm. for, for this show, is as a result of the failed education system we have. Our education system does not prepare us to be job creators, but it rather prepares us, us to be job seekers. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, once you complete your education, you tend to realize that the realities out there are such that the jobs are not just there for you to just come and grab. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you resort to some other stuff. It is also a failed education system in the sense that it prepares us or it produces blind conformists. People graduating from our education system will blindly conform mm -hmm. to the norms, conform to the status quo, instead of questioning the realities of why certain things are happening. Mm -hmm. But also careless revolters. Mm -hmm. Most of the products from our system are careless revolters. We revolt on issues that are not necessary because we do not tend to question, as I said, mm -hmm. the, the reason behind certain issues happening. But away from the failed education system, another factor could be lack of job opportunities, somebody alluded to. Mm -hmm. uh, if people are not given the opportunities uh, out there, obviously they need to survive. Mm -hmm. And uh, he made mention of the fact that the youth are the energetic chunk of the society. So mm -hmm. if you are the energetic chunk of the society, you wake up early morning, you realize that there is a lot of responsibility vested on your soldiers, but there is nothing or little you can do to address those things. At the end of the day, the tendencies are very high that that particular youth may resort to, to violence. But also injustice, the presence of injustice and rural urban migration. Mm -hmm. uh, you realize there is a short, there is mm -hmm. a high rate of rural urban migration, simply because development is not decentralized. All or greater part of development are centered within the greater Banjul area. As a result of this, my brothers and sisters from Nyamina, from Nyomi, from Sierra and the like, would rather come to the greater Banjul area in order to grab those opportunities that are within the greater Banjul area. And once that happens, at the end of the day, the population within the greater Banjul area will increase. And this will tell you that we have about 58% of our population all residing within the Greater Bangladesh area. So look at the land size of the Greater Bangladesh area, compare that to the land size of the country. Mm -hmm. If 58% of our population are all residing within this small piece of land, obviously the tendencies of crime rate increasing are very, very high. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lo. You've said something very interesting, and this actually has just recalled me of a particular area in the NDP, which actually is uh, expiring uh, 2021. I'm looking at this, it says like uh, some of the issues like that we are faced with, you understand? The NDP, it says like uh, youths, poor and inadequate education continues to limit the youth's productivity and acquisition of skills. Meanwhile, insufficient access to knowledge and information, including business development services for entrepreneurial youth, is hindering their gainful engagement. This was designed in 2018, if I'm right, uh, the NDP. So how does this actually transform? Because this thing we are talking about, this was actually in 2017 when we realized that Gambia was out of a different dispensation, certainly some years ago. So have we seen any change on this particular area now? You know, the, both the education and the entrepreneurial and you know acquisition of services that will transform the lives of the youth to become peaceful instead of you know violent in the society. Yeah, in my opinion, there has been little changes in terms of trying to improve such a, a, a negative picture that was painted prior to the new dispensation. Because our education system has not been significantly changed since then. We are still riding on the same kind of system, wherein focus is rather on access and not quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because previously there had been lack of access. And if you look at the education policy, it's such that it is built on three pillars, access, quality, and relevance. Access has been rich, but there is little quality and there is no relevance because the education is not really, really fit for purpose. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable, coming back to you, what do you think youths can do to ensure peace and tranquility in a country? Because youths are part of the society. The peace and tranquility of this country is actually uh, a benefit to the youth. So what do you think the youths can do? Because sometimes the youths think that they are marginalized. So what do you think the youths can do as well? Yeah, of course, um, so many things are involved or so many things are put in place where I believe the young people can participate to realize their potential. In this country, 
uh, you will understand that like he highlighted uh, the educational sector for instance most of our young people are going to school and at the end of the day they will complete their schooling they will not realize what actually they were aiming for for instance they might actually think that um, upon completing school there is something waiting for you out there that you might just grab and start earning a living for instance but when that is not exactly the case they will start involving themselves in the certain things but me i believe it is not just a white collar job where these young people can engage themselves we have other skills in this place we have other areas where we believe the young people can build up their capacity in the area of carpentry in the area of so many other things one can say in order to earn a living but the, the, the belief or the perception is that as soon as you complete your schooling, as soon as you graduate, the only thing that you can do in order to earn a better living is for you to get into an office or for you to have a quiet colored job and start engaging yourself into something. When exactly that is not the case in the Gambia. Employment rate is very narrow, one can say. And in, 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 in this country, you will understand that the young people occupying or forming a greater percentage of the population, the government finds it difficult to make uh, employment available for the young people or to clear that avenue for the young people. It becomes a challenge. Like, uh, you talk about the, 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 the sustainable development goals. The sustainable development goals. You will understand that one of the key pillars that the government was highlighted in that very document was the issue of these young people. How can we ensure that the young people are relevant in the society? Mm -hmm. How can we ensure that the young people participate in any uh, meaningful development of the nation? How can we ensure that the quality education we are looking for is, is we are moving towards that direction? But these are realities that we are not observing mm -hmm. in this country. So the, uh, you will understand in the past system and in this system we are realizing mm -hmm there has not been so many changes. Mm -hmm. So I think the young people, now it is about time we take full responsibility of our nation, mm -hmm. now and after. All that we can do is to participate in things that we believe they are meaningful to yourself and to this country. Engage yourself in the things that we believe mm -hmm. that will move this country forward. Mm -hmm. Engage yourself in the things that you believe will actually help the generation coming after you. Mm -hmm. These are the things that I believe the young people should engage themselves mm -hmm. and stop the um, crimes that they are committing. Mm -hmm. Maybe there could be factors responsible for them committing those crimes, mm -hmm. like employment, the educational aspect of it, and so many other factors. Mm -hmm. But if these things are not available, it's about time the government to create those skill centers training. Mm -hmm. People, not everyone is academically sound. So as a result, create that avenue, create that platform, make sure that the young people are involved, the young people are engaged. In political area, for instance, let political parties engage its young people. Let them give them position, let them give them avenue for them to contest in certain areas. So with that, I think all these crimes that we are experiencing in this country might come down. That is my, my belief. Thank you very much. Uh, you get it right. In fact, uh, I will draw your attention to 2015 UN resolution, United Nations Security Council resolution, that is resolution 2250, mm -hmm. which talks about youth, peace and security, you understand? United Nations even deem it fit and necessary that realizing that leaving the youths behind actually is a very, very uh, serious issue. That as a result, they designed a resolution that is to how to uh, harmonize you know, so this peace building process, how to make sure so that youths are, are used as ambassadors of peace. So this is very important and youths actually have to come forward. You know, so. But you said some things that are very important here, Honorable, that youths actually have to be given the opportunity. It has not to only be a talking shop, but we have to give them the opportunity. But what we realize is that sometimes the youths are used and after on they are dumped. And this is a serious threat to our national peace and security. Because what that inculcates into people is kind of intolerance and rebellion. Because what you tend to catch on yourself is that, in fact, these people use me when they need me and they dump me. So as a result, you try to develop hatreds and enmity. And this is not good. I think it's high time we start looking at these issues that let's use people actually let's try to see how best we build each other let's not use others to exploit them so this is very important uh, honorable honorable what do you think are some of the things actually that you know push youths actually to you know violence thank you very much um, i will just speak from where honorable stops the issue of um, young people employment and uh, access mm -hmm. uh, honorable talks about young people um, looking at the skill sector mm -hmm. but the reality of the fact is the our, our skill sector has not been formalized 
it's very informal that you know when when even when you get trained and all that most of the time after you get trained what you have to sit back again wait for capital and even the kind of skill you get in the Gambia, being it carpentry or whatsoever, it's not of quality that you'll be able to, co to, to, to compete in the international job market. That mm -hmm. is the fact. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're not telling me, go to school until you finish university, have a degree. If you don't have a job, go and learn carpentry because you don't have a job. To me, don't, I think it's part of the solution, but it's not the whole solution. For me, it's about revisiting everything involving young people mm -hmm. let's revisit our schools like uh um mr low Manson, but also let's revisit our universities um i i i know a lot of university graduates since the last graduation they're sitting home with their papers they don't even have intensive much more work so it's time we revisit our school systems. It's time we revisit our work, our job opportunities for the young people. I think if young people are engaged, if they participate in things that involves them, we will have less violence. And then we won't be, you know, we will spend less time talking about peace because we'll be enjoying it. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Honorable. In fact, you are right. In fact, I was like going to another article and, you know, research. I realized that, you know, in fact, when we want to actually have youths, you know, uh, 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 taking the lead, we have to instill patriotism and nationalism in them. Mm -hmm. and, and this is very important. But uh, coming to Mr. Law, actually, before going there, is that, Mr. Law, what do you think should be done to, uh, to harmonize understanding between youths and the government? Because most of the time, the youth see government authorities, especially the police and the army, as enemy. And sometimes the police also see these people as enemy. What do you think can be done to foster understanding between them? I will be very glad if you can speak in Wolof with us so that the Wolof audience can benefit. All right, Jere Jeff, Sisa Lachebo Amsolo Bobu. Why did I such a duty like Del Wad, a few points you have to learn just to clarify? The issue that Honorable Dafa Amlumpi mentioned, Mune Sundawi, Lucibari Sundje Hale Janga. They should have what we call white collar job. But one of them is the palace, the carpenter, the skills, and stuff like that. The other thing is that the palace is formalized. 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 Yar at Tegin, Nyatel be more Mujahla Mitch, Janga La Mitch, or Luna cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. But so he says, Swing Jang, Swing and Swing Jang, why the Gambia fee? Luna can concentrate why the Nenda Jama Joham, cognitive. What I see exam, you have to get a test that Munga remember, Lo Jango, cognitive. Why didn't the test that Linga Janga Munga call apply? My skills. Why didn't that also test while it's an exam? We know that test that he am Nayar, the Amna Tegin, the Munga school with the Amna problem, the Musta. Cost problem, mm -hmm. you you need to test. Mm -hmm. So that the world, how we do school, that far gets net. How many years be I'm on jury because we're not testing school. But how many times we check be I'm on jury that we're not testing. Look at I'm jury, we're not trying to remember. The so remember, we're not remembering. At the end of the day, Chinese people are poor. What you remember, you may forget. So we're not going to learn. Like my name, Sun Jiang, we're going to learn. 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 Why it a meche to go to Sun Jiang Wai? Why not? Why not? Why not? Academically inclined. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Yellow Jiang, Confucian Jiang, that kind of mula. Why not? 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 Why Um, um, establish yourself into something mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you can say that you have to 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 first instance then you have to say that you have to say that you have to government that you have to say 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 that you have to Tambale wa ibo hamde na yudi mbale yudi yep. Ada sosi tayi gafe jeni yafa nek. Ona lagu mungkin nasional assembly. Ndaula. Polisi yusi barin ndaula. Yugi government. Serious. Tika si nyinga hamde nyawa raja ngor sini halai meche agiar. Ay ndaula. Kadang si yana sektor ndaula nyawa fobaris. Muda dan nyawa raja halad ne. Afer bi dunyo nak nyom. 
Why you need blood? Serious. So yeah. that's why Paul or you need blood. I don't know if the problem is not addressed. Mm-hmm. Why it am? So you need for who? Let me know your definition. The problem is addressed. Then go more in. Government is not responsive mm-hmm. towards Ndawi. Do you know you as a politician? Mm-hmm. No promise Ndawi. Mm-hmm. Promise this in a small way. Little little na defal. So from Ndawi. Then Ndawi is standing like a thing. I talk. They defal on Ndawi lolo. That's why I'm not having any great problem. Le pare ndawi bi am lu ñoo jaam ba problème yo xamne sen naxar la ñu ko joytu and you are not listening to them you are not responsive to them problème dang ko fa xa bala mo bala mo bala mo bala mo bala mo xapul way so xare be problème am nga dor ko solve at the end of the day problème la ñu jural té façon yoy la nek di gis sañang is a case in point da nga gis dañu tok di complaint dara ndawi di complaint dara way government ci wax dara ci neme be problème am nak ñu dora jox blém ndawi da nga la suma gis gis li lek mo la def be gis ne problème mi fa xa ni Thank you very much. Uh, you get it right. In fact, you know that was an issue that I discuss here, and it is so sad that you know most of our youths actually will actually you know see themselves incarcerated or in prison because of crimes actually. And when you look at these things, you know, you know, in conflict resolution, they will tell you there is a root cause to every problem. You understand? When the needs of the people actually are not met or satisfied, you understand? As a result, that inculcates something into them. So, uh, honorable, coming to you actually. Uh, What do you think are some of the institutional mechanisms that can be used to address the needs and concerns of the youths? Uh wow, Jerry Jeff, uh lolu da fay am solo trop uh ndax te dama gom ne lepp li nga xamne te ñu ko waxtane, lepp li nga xamne te ñu ko bëgg def, lepp li nga xamne ñu ko bëgg doxal, lepp li nga xamne te ñu ci bëgg yëngu rek ci bir réew mi fi lima gëm moy fok ñu am ay charte yuñ tek, fok ñu am ay loi yuñ tek, fok ñu am ay police yuñ tek, fok ñu jël Uh, kaydi ñu bindal li nga xamne ni tay yoyu la ni wara mëna doxal ci bi réew bi fi so tay institution ci nga xamne ni tay ñoo fi nek yépp government bi is a key um, institution one can say or oh, they will play a greater role in terms of helping these young people numa ko dey waxe moy ndax government war na def dara ndax yi tam war nañu baye xel ne du na dañu tok lu government wara def ñoo fekk ci ñu fu nek they did let's show our commitment let's show our determination let us show them that really we can make it su fekke lolu amna kon ñun lu ñu wara def moy neen formulate policy and programs yi nga xamne ni tay dina jeriñ askan wi waye dina jeriñ ndaw ñi tam te li suñ koy def ndaw ñi waru leen sefat the issue of consultation i would give you one sample for instance da ngay gis tay government muy jël ay project di ko implementer tru ndaw ñi nga bind proposal without any consultation nga dem dat lobby dat project nga indi ko ci tourine down nobody was consulted people affected were never consulted nga indi project bobu ne dang koy implement you don't know the areas in which these young individuals you want to help they can do better you have no idea because you just beautify everything just to attract donors in order to access this um, phone or money or whatever they call it so slowly no na gina su hewe dafa nek program yi nga xamne dafay affect ndaw yu bari ta dafa in the field of project motor project yi nga nek di gis pcp gambia yep yu bari den fail te for the start of the agriculture ak li mu ndu nek just to limit it on the area of the young people lolu mo de feel sun project consultation dafa den lack fofu non te dama bugal lepp li nga xamne ñu koy def ñun ndaw ji nañu jox ñu taxaw ñu xamne li government buga def ñu len ko nek di defal kon ñun ñoo wara jël di leading process ñun ñoo wara formuler document bobu ñun ñoo wara valider document bobu ñu gis ne liñ buga ci project bi ñëwé ñun da nañu jëriñ li buga nañu def ko tay so xolé ci private sector bi government bi this is somehow create that avenue this is somehow make sure that our young people working in the private sector they are safe tay for instance da ngay gis nit ñi ngi liggéey ci private sector because the government cannot accommodate everyone but let us put policies yu nga xamne ni at the end of the day people who working in the private sector i can remember in the national assembly saying this when there was this salary increment they said 50% salary increment i said my people out there those working in the private sector the young people working in the private sector we will be buying things from the same market mm-hmm. we will be spending resources as equal mm-hmm. so if my salary is increased and those young people in the private sector there is no mechanism put in place at least for them to have minimum wages mm-hmm. it will be difficult when prices are increased of course they will they will be affected so these are things that i believe all these things affecting young people mm-hmm. we should put good policies and programs on the table to ensure that at the end of the day lepp li nga xamne ni bëgg nañ ko doxal ci turin ndaw ni ndaw ni jité lolu wa su nekk lolu fatigo projection da ñuy fel seriously and honorable thank you very much you know 
these are the issues, you know. I always tell people, you know, youths are the backbone, and you cannot go and lobby for something. You cannot go and call for something, and as a result, you bring it without involving those people, you know. I think it's high time we look at these things properly, and thank you very much for that. And here now, uh, Honorable Degen will actually shed more light on this because they, C is a youth, and C is working at the National Youth Parliament, you understand? I think it's high time you people at the National Youth Parliament to come up with bills, you know, and, you know, you know, put this before the National Parliamentarians, you know, and see them, you know, and tell them that, look, it's high time you look at these issues very well. So I think, you know, what is your take on that? Thank you very much, Justice. Um, actually, we are working on things like that to make sure we do not only present policies, but we make sure it becomes participatory ones where um, young people are adequately represented mm -hmm. and we talk about our issues and table it before the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are working on a reformation mm -hmm. to make sure these things happen and I hope before the end of the year mm -hmm. we'll have our first sitting and uh, there will be huge changes. Yeah, um, as to the institutional um, changes to make sure young people participate. I think it is very important mm -hmm. because all these things are happening. We will talk about it. But so far as we don't take it to the institutional levels, we will not have solutions mm -hmm. because all we can do is talk. Mm -hmm. But if we don't have the policies, if we don't have the institutions to, also to remedy this, it will always remain a problem. That's why it is important for uh, our, our representatives, our leaders out there, know that it is important to, you know, to take decisions on our behalf that will be out to our benefit, that will help us access resources, that will help us participate in, in matters concerning us. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable. Uh, and also, you know, anytime I come here, I try to make sure that a topic is actually, uh, or a question is actually posed that is going to be regarding to our 2021 elections, because all the hopes are actually, you know, raised, you know, and, you know, People are actually hoping and anticipating, you know, for the 2021 election. But we are seeing in Africa, you know, even around the world, elections have become, you know, moments, you know, for violence, you know, eruptions. And this is something that is very, very serious. And it's high time we look at our own Gambian situation. We forecast things, you know. We invite people to come and discuss on this, you know. That's why, in fact, today the presence of uh, Mr. Lowe and Honorable Degen and Honorable you know, Sise will actually help us to know from the dimension. Okay, starting with Mr. Lowe. Mr. Lowe, how do you see the 2021 election climate in relation to peace and conflict or security? Uh, the 2021 election, in my opinion, as it stands now, is a scary one. I am indeed worried with the way the dynamics are going. Mm -hmm. uh, we are politically polarized. Mm -hmm. We are divided today more than ever on political lines. Mm -hmm. Uh, not only because we have more political parties now, but also due to the fact that some politicians do not have programs and ideas that they are selling out to the people, but using the political divide, using certain mechanisms to divide people towards their advantage, and this is really not helping. So in my opinion, it is very, very scary, but it can be curtailed. Mm -hmm. It can be curtailed if proper sensitization is done, mm -hmm. And I really commend the National Youth Parliament, the National Youth Council, the CSOs, and some other institutions that are doing a great job mm -hmm. in trying to sensitize our people, especially those at the provinces, mm -hmm. to ensure that they have a good idea mm -hmm. as to what, how important it is to have free, fair, and peaceful elections. But also, I will challenge the teachers to inculcate these ideas of peace among their, their learners. But also, the politicians, he mentioned it, particularly the heads of politi political parties. Um, they should definitely be preaching peace among their, their supporters, because at the end of the day, even no matter what politi political party or political leader that is going to win the 2021 election, you will find it very difficult or even impossible to govern this country if we are shattered into pieces. Mm -hmm. So it is better for you to govern, that is for whoever that is going to win, to mm -hmm. govern this country mm -hmm. in peace than in pieces. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, that is very clear and eloquent. You know, uh, Honorable, uh, you are a member of parliament and most of the decisions actually, in fact, all the formal decisions of this country actually come from the parliament, you understand? And how are you people also preparing as parliamentarians to ensure that the 2021 election is conducted under a very free, fair and a transparent environment where the peace and security of this country will not be taken for granted? Yes, Lolo uh, Amnosolo is a very important thing because this year, of course, um, sometimes 
I will just invite myself to any radio or to any TV just to talk about issues related to peace. Mm -hmm. Because I believe it is very important and mostly the young people are affected. So that is why, in fact, at times I will not wait to be invited, but I will just show up myself to any radio station or to any TV just to be interviewed in terms of issues relating to peace. Mm -hmm. At the level of the National Assembly, in relation to the election that we will be observing maybe December 4th, uh, the National Assembly is currently, I am part of a committee that is currently dealing with the election bill, and I believe we will do justice to that bill okay. because we will be having five days national consultation. We will go across the country to hold public hearing and all those things to get submission, inputs and all those things from individuals, stakeholders and all other authorities just to ensure that we can have that free and fair election. Again, as a National Assembly member, my responsibility is not just to sit in that National Assembly and have laws amended or make laws, regulation or whatever. But it is important as a people representative, you are privileged to know so many things. You are privileged to observe certain things. You are privileged, of course, to enter into so many things with mm -hmm. the authorities and all that. No. So it is important you as the representative of the people to go back to the people, sensitize them, let them know, make them aware. Let them be conscious of certain things that are coming to happen in this country, especially this year. Let them make sure that they, 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 they maintain peace in this country, mm -hmm. in whatsoever process that we are under taking, mm -hmm. especially this election, campaign period, election period, and all those things. Let the people make sure that there is peace mm -hmm. in this country, mm -hmm. which is very important. And the political parties cannot be exempted in this. And I would always emphasize it. Leaders of political parties, they are very crucial in this. Mm -hmm. There are people who listen to them. National Assembly members, they are very crucial in this. There are people who listen to them and they do obey them in whatsoever that they are trying to sensitize them. Mm -hmm. So it is important for political party leaders, mm -hmm. for National Assembly members, mm -hmm. councillors, mayors and all of them, mm -hmm. let them come out to the public, let them come to a platform of this nature, mm -hmm. let them go to the radio, let them talk to the people, let them sensitize them, let them ensure that at the end of the day, yes, you are voting for me. Don't only ask people to vote for you, but tell them equally what their responsibilities are. Mm -hmm. Tell them so that at the end of the day, while they are following you, they will know exactly what to do mm -hmm. and how to go by it. But if these things are not happening, you are only after people to vote for you or to elect you into office, then at the end of the day, like he said, this country, you will find it difficult to go this country. Mm -hmm. Because if there is no peace, mm -hmm. yourself, you will not have peace. And if there is no peace, at that level, you cannot develop this country by using any means. Mm -hmm. It's not just possible. Mm -hmm. So political party leaders, national assembly members, councillors, mayors, all selected leaders, traditional leaders, all of them, mm -hmm. all individuals, authorities that we believe they are influential, they can make a great impact mm -hmm. in relation to sensitizing people to be aware, to be conscious mm -hmm. of their rights and responsibility mm -hmm. to ensure that we maintain peace in this country. Mm -hmm. Let them come out in their large numbers and talk to the people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable, you actually have you know, shed light on something that is very important and politicians can't be left behind in this crusade. And as Mr. Law said, when this country you know, is, put into, you know, is put into pieces, you understand? When you as an aspiring politician come, in fact, I don't call them, you know, I call them you know, presidents in the making, you understand? When you come, you have to start rebuilding. And that project that you have, you understand, it means you have to divert your whole course and address those urgent needs of the people. And if you don't address those ones, you know, people will actually see you as, you know, somebody who is not competent. So that is why politicians, you know, I commend them a lot because I have not seen any single politician of this country who is actually, uh, you know, instigating violence. Who is telling his people or uh, her people that you know take arms you know and fight against these people? But what we are saying still is that you the politicians, you are voices in this country, you the politicians, you have power in this country, you the politicians, you actually are role models are, are role models and charismatic figures in this country. So what we are urging you is that continue on preaching the message of peace so that you, I, your children, my children and the future generation can be born in a society where there is peace because where there is peace there is progress and where there is progress there is development and where there is development there is steady peace of mind so uh must uh honorable job honorable job you know uh women are very important in every society 
and Gambian women deserve compliments because Gambian women actually have distinguished themselves that they are ready to serve this country, they are ready to take this country to any level. What are the women doing to ensure there is peace and security? Although many a time women are the victim, they are the victims of rape, sometimes they are the victims of attacks or robbery, but women have influence, you know, not physical force, but women actually also can contribute to ensure peace and security of this country. What, is, what are you doing as a woman? Thank you very much, Our Justice. But before I come to your question, I would just like to elaborate on what Honor Honorable was saying as to elections and peace. Uh, at the National Youth Parliament, uh, we are all scared of the political climate, but we are not waiting. We are not waiting for the time bomb to explode. We, we are doing what we can do. We are sensitizing people wherever they are in the Gambia, to the heart, to, to rich villages, to the towns and everywhere. We will, we will be observant from, the, from now to December 4th and further, we'll be observing, we'll be denouncing, and we'll be reminding every stakeholder of your responsibility uh, on elections and to make sure we all have a peaceful election. Uh, Justice, just like you said, um, Gambian women deserve praises in making sure Gambia is a peaceful country. But I will, not, I will deliberately not dive into that because my question will be, what is Gambia doing? to make sure Gambian women participate more in the building of peace in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. What are we doing for Gambian women? We are only good at letting the Gambian women take the back seat to ensure peace, to ensure we elect our leaders, to ensure blah, blah, blah. But in turn, what is the Gambia doing for Gambian women? When we talk about peace, yes, we can be peaceful in our immediate society and order. Mm -hmm. But the things that, that actually instigate violence in countries is, comes from our institutions. How are women represented in our government institutions, in our government agencies and everywhere? Including the National Assembly, including the Cabinet and including every other government sector. Until we cater for women enough for them to, be, for them to represent themselves, for them to represent society as they, they are doing in our homes, it will be difficult for women to adequately participate in the, in the sustenance of peace of our country. And I think it becomes a collective responsibility to make sure this happens. Um, and then I will, <laughs> I remember we have the, the election bill that is currently in the parliament. That is, you know, that we are talking about the 30% women quota and all that. But what we are saying is not very pleasing because uh, registration is starting the 29th and uh, you know they, they, they have to have public hearing and all that for the election bill to pass mm -hmm. does that mean we are going to start our election process without the election bill or are we starting our election process with the old electoral bill these are all challenges women will be facing you know when we have good laws that that you know inculcate women into these things to make sure they participate to their very best i think it needs proactiveness mm -hmm. For, from all of us to make sure, you know, we have these bills passed, we have this law passed, so, so, to make sure women does, they do their best when it comes to the sustenance of so, peace so in our country. Take, you, I, I don't cut you short enough, but I will come back to you. Uh, you've asked a technical question, yeah. actually. Uh, honorable, you know, she said, you know, whether the bill, uh, the, we are going to have that uh, registration process, you know, whereas, you know, that bill actually is not actually, you know, uh, completed. Uh, what is your take on that? Because you are in the parliament. Yes, um, like I said before, I am part of that committee. The bill is, of course, tabled before Parliament and it is referred. These are procedures. I may not actually get to every procedure of the National Assembly. But the bill stands referred to, be to the uh, uh, Local Government Committee and the Human Rights Committee because we believe there are some human rights elements in that bill. That is why we make it a joint committee. So these two committees are responsible in scrutinizing that document to ensure that we have a better document. In doing so, this has nothing more to do with the registration as we speak. The existing law that we have will take place. The registration will be going on and all other things in relation to the election will be going using the existing law. But before the next election, that I can tell you and I can confirm this to you, we will have that particular bill or law passed in the National Assembly and we will use that in the next you, election. You mean the 2026 election? The 2021 election. Okay, okay, for okay, election okay, I mean. okay, okay. Because um, electoral laws cannot be amended or passed six months before, before elections. elections. I know that. Mm -hmm. Yes, but now we are trying to fast track everything. As I'm speaking to you next week, we are starting this 
public hearing that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And as soon as this is done, then we will have everything, write our report, then submit it to plenary mm -hmm. for plenary to approve it. Mm -hmm. Every national assembly member is concerned. Mm -hmm. We are representing people and people are concerned. Mm -hmm. So of course I must be concerned. Mm -hmm. That is why everything that we are doing, we are trying to fast track everything to ensure that that bill is passed mm -hmm. immediately. Th thank you very much. Thank you. So I hope that is satisfactory. <laughs> eh? <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, Mr. Lowe. Mr. Lo, as uh, Degen said, you know, what Gambia is doing, you know, to empower these women. I mean, actually, you are one of those youths who actually have always been there for the women, you know, raising the bar of the women, you know, building the esteem, you know, trying to empower women. What do you think, you know, you should do what? Can you buttress on that topic? Yeah, I, I think she is very, very right. Um, even though our today's topic of discussion was centered on youth, but even within the youth, you have women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in as much as youth are very, very significant uh, towards the development of this country, women are equally very, very important mm -hmm. in that regard. As a result of that, they cannot be neglected in whatever we are to do as a country, in whatever we are to do towards developing this country. Mm -hmm. So I really agree with her that uh, women need they really need to be empowered by the government to ensure that their voices are heard. But at the end of the day, you realize that, look, just have a, an assessment of our representatives. Mm -hmm. Since we are in a representative, representative democracy, mm -hmm. we cannot have everybody at the executive, we cannot have everybody as a national assembly member, but we need representatives. Mm -hmm. But even those people that are representing us, just make an analysis, an assessment of the percentage for men and the percentage for women. You will realize that in every sector, the men are dominating. Mm -hmm. And I raised this question some time ago on my Facebook page, that if we have more women than men, then why do we have more men in leadership positions than, than women? women. It's a kick, and that question is still hanging. <laughs> is it because men are more educated? And the answer to that is not no. It's definitely no. Mm -hmm. Is it because women are not ready to take part in leadership positions? The answer is also no. Mm -hmm. Women are ready, women are educated, women are prepared mm -hmm. to take up leadership responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But societal norms and some other challenges are still there, mm -hmm. serving as barriers, uh, blocking women from acti um, actually realizing their Thank potential. you. Thank you very much. The reason why I brought the issue of women is actually specifically this one is more or less, not all those old age women, but actually Gambian women yeah. who actually are in the youthful, their youthful age. Because most of them, when you ask them, you know, take part in politics, they are either shy, some of them will tell you, I cannot go. Either their confidence has been shattered or they actually do not see any prospect in it because they thought that, you know, there is a kind of hindrance there. So, but nonetheless, actually, uh, Honorable Day time is going and today is Friday and we actually have to be wrapping up. Um, but one important area we are coming to, because this is a platform of youths actually talking about something about youths. And what closing remark do you have for the youths? Wow. Jerry Jeff Lulu, I am going to talk to you all of you. I am going to talk to you program. I am going to talk to you all of you. I am going to talk to you all of you. I am going to talk to kon li nga xamne mang koy denk ndaw ñu moy lepp li nga xamne ñu ko wote ci dekk bi fi lepp li nga xamne ñu ko bëgg ci dekk bi fi bëpp development ñu nga xamne ni ñu ci dox té jamm amu ci dekk bi forget it it is not going to work hay su féké develop lén suñu ñu bëpp para sa ñu indi violence wala indi war ni indi crime whatsoever at the end of the day lool yu dafa ñew dem du am njëriñ kon development goes with that peace building process development goes with that um sustainable peace in this country waye su fekke nga xamni yoyu nekko di am da nga gis ne challenge ben tay ni ligue yeb dafa ñu zero kon ma ngi ñaan ndaw ni ñep ñi nga xamni ñu nga na accuse because lu xew fi ndaw ji lan de accuse mang la na ñaan lepp li nga xamni ni tay ñu koy def neen baye xal mu and ak loi ñu and say yar ñu and say teggi ñu def ko ni nga xamni ni askan ñu lañ ko bëgge wala society bi ñu lañ ko bëgge ñu baye satcha bi satcha bi dumbale won ñu ñu baye jëmante paga bi lolu yobu ñu ci kanam ñu baye police yu nekké di xex police ci nekku ci non dem fa nek pour armé pour protéger ni pour gis na ñu ci jamma kon li ni yëpp dafa nek yu nga xamné ni neñ ko baye xel té élection bi su ñëwé ndaw ñi nga xamné té ñuy top political parties na political parties waxa ñom na yu ci ñëmi tam jël dat leadership role ñu baye xel né lepp li nga xamné ñu koy def ndaw ñu ba ci dëkk bi kon cër bu ñu wax neñ ko mëna jox waye ñimi tam wax nañu mëna wone sel tank lan leen bëgg ñu dox ci participer ci gis na lepp dem na ñu wara démé ci walu ndaw ñi jëriñu thank you very much uh, honorable uh, mbélé mo moy ay uh, minfo
wala ñun di ko fo ni ngi ñanta katale ma ñoo moy fitno ngam bulo bo nda ko no ngam singo bo nda ko no ngam nda bo nda ko no ñoo so ni su ñaaro ni you know ñoo fa na fa taala so uh, honorable degen you can also give your closing remark um thank you very much uh justice um suma closing remark bi dama ko joxe ci alof ah fok na ne um kom ndaw yi am nañ suñ responsibilities pour make sure ne am kom xanara bu ñu ko waxe ñu lo abaydi ñu make sure ne am suñ ak ak suñ yelef buñ tok di xaar kenn mu kenn mu usil ñuko ñu jël ñuko suñ bopa way fa na ne tamit am dafa detay dafa dess suñ nguur bi ah pour ñu ñu jox youth si luñ yello ñu jox ñu luñ yello ah pour make sure ne ñu tamit am nañ suñ cieur ci national cake bi ñu ñu formulate policies yo xamne you know it's in the favor of the young people not only formulate but try to implement those policies in consultation with young people but para make sure that it's in political parties because dega dega at the end of the day just massaging truth mo fi nek rek dinen tok wax ne youth are important in politics go to our political parties it is not the reality happening but youth are they are you know taking the back seat i think it is very important it's time we start putting these these words into action to make sure when you go to our political parties we make sure young people are represented when we take the government when we when we come into government we make sure young people are fairly represented and women and young people are fairly represented thank i you. think when we do this we will have less of problems Th- thank when you it comes man. to uh, passive uh, participation uh, sorry let me say this it is important in this show for us for me to talk about this and the whole world to hear this see there is this problem we are facing in the national assembly and the government is fully responsible the national kid that they see is talking about the young people since i came to parliament we always have less than 1% of the national budget i have been fighting for this i have been talking about this i have been crying for this but still there is nothing much we can realize in that aspect from the national kid mm. so that that's very clear and that's actually that has gone viral and i hope so that the audience will actually get this and mr lo you can also give your closing remark Thank you Esa. Um thank you for the invitation. It's really a pleasure being here. Uh, my closing remark will be uh, centered on three areas to the youth, to the government and to everybody. Um to the youth like the honorable said, let us always be law abiding. Um let us never take the laws in our own hands. Even though we will continue advocating for you uh, whenever we have the platform to do and we challenge everybody to also keep advocating for the young people. But even when our rights are violated, when our concerns are are not addressed there are laws in place that we can follow to ensure that those things are addressed to the government i will also challenge them to ensure that youths are given their due to ensure that women and youths are not only used as political tools for mobilization and at the end of the day when they attain their goals they are neglected because at the end of the day this will continue um, grooming and brewing uh, frustration among the young ones so i would ensure and challenge them to be responsive and to be responsible government and to everybody peace is everybody's concern we all have a role to play we need to advocate for peace in our homes in our communities in our schools wherever we are be it religious leaders compound heads teachers whoever and particularly the IEC the independent electoral commission we are heading to elections and having a free fair and transparent election is very essential mm-hmm. towards having a peaceful election so thank, you very, you, much, uh, thank you very much thank you very much mbele ngawo moy nyama do be min ko ta jago len ñindi ko ndax si la ma mbulo la ñu kan pour ka de ko ñukay ni fitno wul de mo len me wul la nga fa nga fitno di mba fa no be seri min ka ma jago len ñindi ko ka ñoo kew yandi kairo la akum ma yala anin mu ne be masibo ni masibo ko min nat na society kono So belenga mo yemi fo and kuma kende bar ye wala fa jam so in the meantime the peace talk so is here and it is business as usual every week follow us on Fatu network as we will be discussing an important issues that are going to be related to peace and development so in the meantime we are saying thank you to our able technician Mansur and the whole technician team of Fatu network we are also saying thank you to Fatu camera for actually giving us the enabling environment And I'm also sending special regards to my special friend and advisor the former AIG of the Gambia police uh, in the Machongan he has always been there helping and guiding and any in fact any question that I design he makes sure that the question is well scrutinized whether it is suitable for purpose so we are saying thank you and audience also we are saying thank you please follow this and don't only stop at following you can also give your comments you know sir let's try to make sure that when we are commenting we give productive and constructive comments because 
The whole objective of this show is actually to nurture a society where tolerance is inculcated into people. So we have, it's high time we change the paradigm, we shift the paradigms, you know, let's be peace loving, let's be peace embracing. So we are thanking you all for actually Happy taking fun. your time to follow us on Fabi Network and please bring more people on board to follow because this is a show that is to be watched. So we thank you, God bless you, Ramadan Mubarak and Friday Mubarak.